The complete count for Census 2020 uh, is one of the most important things that a community can do. From the federal right down to the local level, taking the number of people that are here in our communities is really important in so many different ways. So tell us a little bit about what you're learning uh, through the Complete Count Committee for Census 2020. The, the federal government bases the monies that they give each state on the numbers of people that you have. Because based on the numbers of people, it could be more kids in the schools, it could be more people who have retired and they need different services, it could be the people who are looking to buy houses. It's, it's, it's a huge, it's, it's all across every age of every person that lives here. And the big part about this is the state of Massachusetts is looking at $22 billion that could come to us. Just from the, the counting of the census? Exactly. Okay. So let's make this clarification for residents. There's two census, one that happens federally 10 years, every 10 years, mm -hmm. and there's another one that goes out once a year. So just briefly, that town census is for? It's for our voter registration to make okay. sure that you're still living in the same location so that my voter list is complete and accurate. The other piece of it is for our local schools, we can let them know how many children are we can expect to come into the school system in any given year. Okay, so coming back to the federal, um, you know, you, you stated a very large number of $22 billion, but we can break this down into uh, our senior center and money for uh, our community's senior center, mm -hmm. but we can also break it down region-wide as well. Absolutely. D don't forget that all of us have representatives from different areas and the, the complete com count committee for us is by Barnstable County. So what we're looking at at a county level is, gee, how many representatives do we need? How many senators do we need? Will those numbers change? And as those numbers grow or change or decrease, it moves our, it moves our voting lines for who we can vote for. Right, and this actually even um, uh, comes right down in granular into the local level of changing precinct lines as well. Absolutely. Did that happen recently in 2013? Actu actually, it did. We had to have all 13 town councilors had to be up for an election in, one, in, in that one year because all of the precinct lines changed. So they moved a little bit, and it, uh, that's all it takes. But for your town councilor, you want to be able to vote for your town councilor. Right. So as we, we look, so um, obviously federal funding is, is a big piece of the census. Um, uh, school funding, mm -hmm. uh, voting for representatives and region. This whole count, though, a complete count, what does that really mean that you want a complete count? A complete count means all of the people. It doesn't, it, the people who will respond sometimes to a census will leave children off. We need to know about the children. Um, we have a lot of folks that are homeless here. We still want to count them because they're still getting services through the town of Barnstable. There are folks that are um, on some kind of aid. That information is important to us too. So we want everyone, whether you're here, six or eight months out of the year or are you here you know part-time what what is your what when are you here and when are you using these facilities so let's talk a little bit about some of those demographics you've touched on the homeless uh, population uh, here on Cape Cod but also um, those transient residents who may spend a portion of their year someplace else, or perhaps a college student. How is that handled in the census? You know, that's a good question. The, the college students that do go away to school, they are capturing that information as well at the college level, but the parents are probably keeping that person also on the census because they're only there for a portion of the year and then they're home again. 
Same is true of those folks that are snowbirds. Where do they consider their home? Do they consider their home here on the Cape? Or do they consider their home in Florida or the Carolinas or wherever they are? We need to know that. We need to try and capture that information. Right. So what's a, okay. a good rule of thumb, especially for our snowbirds out there, um, of determining where they're living um, at any given time within the year? We ask them to tell us where they, what address do you use for the IRS when you do your tax return? Okay. Because that's the address then that we would consider your full-time address. Right. So we've touched upon our homeless populations and uh, school-age children and college students. What other populations seem to be undercounted? Well, we have an awful lot of immigrants on the Cape and they're out there working. They're a part of a viable part of our community. And they need to know that this information is just for census purposes. It doesn't go anyplace else. It is a matter of fact, the census that is gained, the information that's gained on a personal level is just all put together in a big pot so that we can look at the demographics and we, we are not looking at any one individual. Um, in 72 years, that information will be made available. So those folks that are out there doing um, genealogy, they can find this information out about their, their parents or their grandparents or whomever. Right. So we want to reiterate that all of the census, all the questions that are on there are held in the highest confidentiality. Um, none of this uh, information is made public in any way until after 72 years. Absolutely. And the people that do the census are, are, um, have to sign a confidentiality ac agreement. They realize they could be prosecuted and, and uh, they just they keep that information very, very safe. So now we're at the census. There's a, a full timeline of this. So let's really delineate for our residents when they can expect to be contacted about the census. The first mailing should go out about mid-March. Okay. It's going to be a letter form, I believe, uh, to all the people in the town of Barnstable or actually everywhere okay. in the United States. It's supposed to be a concerted effort all the way across the United States. Um, the address that we have for your voter registration information, that's the address they're going to use. So we're hoping that everyone's address for mailing is up to date. Um, beyond that, if you don't respond, and you can respond in more than one way, if you don't respond, then you're going to get a postcard in two weeks. And then after that, if you don't respond, you're going to get one more mailing. And if they don't hear back from you at the Census Bureau, they're going to send someone out to see you. So let's just back <coughs> up a little bit. Um, the census itself can be in three different uh, formats. So mm -hmm. I believe I heard it was online, yep. yay. Uh, paper format, mm -hmm. if you love to fill in the bubbles. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one was by phone. Yes, <clears throat> because they have 12 different languages being spoken by phone. So that someone who doesn't understand the, the English language, they can actually make a phone call and talk to someone who can speak Portuguese or Russian or whatever and help them through it. Right. So three different ways, um, multiple touch points for alerting of it, it, the census is now being taken. And census day is when? April 1st. <laughs> so April 1st, which sometimes has another connotation of, of April Fool's, but this really is a fool's errand if you don't fill out the census. Correct. Um, we're trying to make sure that everyone understands that no one is going to, on the phone, no one's going to ask you for money, no one's going to ask you social security number, nobody, no one's going to ask you for bank accounts. All we need is the information that will help us to complete the census for 2020. Right, so we can reiterate that there's no monetary uh, ask at this. <laughs> there is absolutely no discerning information about 
the person itself mm -hmm. there's no social security numbers there's no you know father's last name mother's last name any of that information as well mm -hmm. this is a very general survey that just looking for information for demographics absolutely okay so <laughs> when does the person come to your house and should we expect them at any time of the day? Actually, they can come to your house between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. They will have a, 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 a lanyard with a picture of them and the logo for the census, the census 2020. They'll also have uh, a bag with them that has the census, census 2020 on it. And inside the bag will be a laptop so they could actually sit down with you and do everything on a laptop. But mm -hmm. all of those things will have the Census 2020 logo on them. Right, now we do have a population that might be a little um, scared of opening that door. Is there a safeguard with that? Can they call somebody if they think that maybe they, they don't have a Census person in their, their home? Absolutely, the, the person standing outside your house can give you a telephone number to call to speak to their particular supervisor. There's also numbers uh, that'll be online that you can call to the centralized information for Census Bureau, mm -hmm. and they will give you the information. So there's a bunch of different ways, and they have to all be uh, vetted with the police department. So every, you know, it's, it's a safeguard all the way around. It's a safeguard all the way around. So, one, you'll get information about when the census is open and mm -hmm. how to um, take either the phone, the paper, or the online version of mm -hmm. the census. Uh, if you don't fill out that or didn't get one, mm -hmm. it's probably because your address hasn't been updated. Um, and then once we kind of like come into this season, so March is really, and it seems that we're talking about it very early, but once March hits, there's a whole lot of information that can be gained from the census. They have so many vehicles of information now through social media. Yes, absolutely. And they're going to be updating everything as, as we go forward. What is the single <coughs> most important thing that you want residents to remember about Census 2020? It's so important for everyone to be counted. It's just so important. And it falls on everything that we have here in this beautiful community that we live in. We're, we're so fortunate to be here, um, but we need to make sure that we're getting everything that we possibly can for the life that everybody wants to lead here. Census 2020, be counted.